What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie. And in today's tutorial, we're going to explore how to run ChatGPT and other large language models on your Linux system using the Olama tool. Now Olama makes it easy to download and interact with a variety of open source large language models similar to OpenAI's ChatGPT. So whether you're a tech enthusiast, a developer, or just curious about AI, this video will guide you through setting up Olama on your bunch 22.04 so let's get started all right so i'm at the github page for olama but before diving into the installation let's discuss what olama is and its significance now like i stated earlier olama is an open source tool that enables the setup of a wide variety of large language models using simple commands it eliminates the need for manual processes making it a game changer for those looking to run models like llama 2 or like orca falcon and open chat locally That's that's the dope part about it. You can actually run all of this locally. And so that opens it up for you to store all your information, any of the information that you put in it locally on your own system and you control your data. You don't have to worry about an organization losing any chat information that you put up there. And it's always recommend not to put any personal information up there on like chat GPT or any of these other AI tools that are out there. And so Olama help with that. And so at the end of the day, this approach offers greater control, privacy, and the ability to interact with these models directly on your Linux system. Now this application uses the MIT license. So you guys can check it out. It's currently on version 0.1.20 and it was updated five days ago. So they're constantly developing. As you can see, it's got 105 contributors to the code of this application. If you go down a little further, you'll see how to get it installed. You can install it on Mac. You can install it on Linux. And what cool thing on Linux, it's just a one, one script you have to run to get it installed. They also have a Docker image you can install as well, but I'll just use a script that way we can get it installed directly on our server and not within a container. And it also breaks down the models you can use. They have a library of all the models. And let me go down and go there so you guys can see that, but these are the major ones. Now, let me read this note down here. I want to show you guys this. You should have at least eight gigabits of RAM available to run the LB models. 16 gigabytes if you run the 13B models or 32 gigabytes to run the 33B models. So that's one thing you really have to pay attention to is your hardware of your system and what you're running because it could be very hard to run some of these models if you don't have the proper hardware. And typically what you want to do is have a dedicated system to run these models off of. And majority of the time people have video cords because that can handle a lot of the processes when it comes to looking at these models. And so just be weary of the hardware requirements. And if you go down in here, it breaks down, you know, the installation references to different things like the models, how to download multiple models or create your own model based on a model and actually storing it and all that good stuff. So you can go through the documentation of it. They do a great job of putting all the information out there for you. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to show you guys, if you go over right here under the model library, uh, you can click right here is olama.ai and you can go to the library and this will show you the other models that are available to you. It's a whole bunch in here like Orca 2, Orca Mini. Uh, it was another one I saw in here. I think it's one of the ones created by Microsoft. Yeah, Orca 2, that is Orca 2, Microsoft Research. And this model is designed to excel particularly in reasoning. So just go through and check it out. Like this one, Wizard Math. So it's a model focused on math and logic problems. And you can also see like which ones are being used the most as far as the pools go. And I think it's in order by the amount of people. Most people use the Llama 2. That's the most popular. It's just a general use language model. And if we go back over to the main page, if you look at Llama 2, it tells you it's a 7B as far as the parameters. So 7B can run using eight gigabits of RAM. So I got at least eight gigabits of RAM on my virtual machine. And also let me show you another application that I will go through and install because if you can't visualize it, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? You can do, they have tools for the command line, but I want to show you guys how to set it up on the server. And I also want to add the Olama web UI. So I'm gonna go through both of these. And this is a dope little tool right here. This is a picture of it. It kind of looks just like chat GPT, but you can select your models 
and you can run through and do whatever you need to do using a local language model you know right from the web and you're connecting to it you know from your house your internal network which is super dope now let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine so we can go through the install and get it set up before we move forward i wanted to give a quick shout out to ciq the official partner of rocky linux rocky linux is a linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the red hat enterprise linux operating system source code the project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, so I'm connected to my virtual machine via SSH. And let's start with the installation process by first updating our system. That's something you want to always do whenever you're installing any new software on a system is to update it. So let's run sudo apt update and press enter. And this system is, this server is actually already updated. I know it's not gonna have any updates, so I ran through all the updates. And as you can see, it says all packages are up to date, but you may see something different. Now let's switch back over to the website because I wanna show you guys how to get it installed. And it's super simple on Linux. There's a script. I definitely want you guys to check this script out. You, you definitely wanna look into this script. Make sure it doesn't, you know, have anything in it, but I reviewed it off camera you know what i'm saying just checking to see what it's going to do but it's going to go through install the applications create a user give it permissions and all that stuff so you want to check that out make sure it's doing something that you wanted to do on your system so let me switch back over to my terminal so you guys can see me run the script but that's all i did was copy that so let's go down and run it right fast but that's all you got to do this is the installation of olama it'll go through the process of downloading and then installing everything via that script you'll see that it creates a user a olama user and it also create the service you know enable that service and it'll also store that service and so one thing you can do to check if the service is running is by typing sudo system ctl status and then it's olama dot service so let's press enter and you'll see that it's active and running so our server is up and running we have olama installed and it's good to go now it's time to download our large language model and let me go back over here to the website again just to look at them again like i said i'm gonna do the olama 2 and actually let's go back over to the library because the name is the exact name that's up here so all you got to do is type it exactly like what, what's up here so l llama 2 so switch back over to the terminal and i'll show you guys the command because it's a you know it's a few commands for a llama uh, you can check them out i'm not going to go through them all but i'll just at least show you guys how to pull down the large, large language model so l llama and then two and that's the one we want to download and you can download as many as you want and as you can see it's it's downloading it's going to go through the process it's like 3.8 gigabytes in size and that's one thing i didn't point out you want to make sure you know you have enough drive space because these things can get pretty big and take up a lot of space on your system so that's why i recommend you you know set up a dedicated either server like a smaller server or something like that or just set up the virtual machine to where it can run this properly with enough hard drive space on it and as far as other large language models that you want to put on here you're only limited by the space that you have on the system so you can install you can pull down as many of those language models as you want and then when we get to the installation of the gui the web ui then you guys will see where you can select different language models to actually run and use on your system now we're pretty much done with olama it's, it was pretty simple i want i'm gonna run the ui using the docker setup and so we need docker install so i'm gonna run through this right fast i won't bore, bore you guys through the process I, I have a lot of the commands i already copied out but i'll at least tell you what i'm doing so we already ran an update on the system where we refresh the repositories let's go to install a couple dependencies for docker so let's go on and get that installed that's basically the app transport https ca certificates curl which we already have software properties dash common so let's go on and press y enter we can go through and install those packages and now what we're gonna do is add a PPA and so the first thing we need to do is add a GPG key for docker the docker repository so I already had that copy I'm basically curling down that GPG key and installing it on the system and then now we can add our repository 
and like I said, I'm I may make a blog post that'll have all these commands in there. That way you guys can copy them out. But all you gotta do is search how to install Docker. There's plenty of tutorials out there, but I create one on my website just so you guys can get the information if you need it. But this will add the repository for Docker. And now we can run the sudo apt updates and this will refresh the repositories and also refresh that docker repository which is the main one we want to do now we can install docker and what i'm gonna do is install docker ce as well as docker ce cli and then containered io so let's go on press enter and go through and install that all right and so docker is installed you can verify that it's actually up and running we can type sudo system ctl and then status of Docker and it's got service, press enter. And you can see that it's active and running. So we're good to go with that. Now let's go back over to the documentation on the website. Just want to show you guys a little bit more as far as the UI, but they do have some installation instructions. If we go down a little further, you'll see it'll, it kind of walks through a lot of the same things that we just did, but Olama after the initial install, it actually, when it starts, it actually runs at 127.0.0.1 and then this port, so 11434. And so we need to know that in order to get our Docker container installed and it connects to the Olama backend. And that way you can use your language models that we have installed or that we pulled down. So we got Docker installed. Let me just go on and copy and paste our Docker command in there. And let me switch back over to the terminal. I just wanted to show you guys where I got the information from. I had to modify it and I'll show you guys what I did to modify it right fast. So let's go back over here, paste in our Docker command. And as you see, it's just Docker run dash D. I had to make some modifications to it. So dash dash network dash host. And then I also put the location of our Olama server, which is basically a loopback or the home address for the system with that same port and then API and then the rest of the information like the name of the Docker container. And so let's go down and uh, press enter. We can run it and I forgot about that. We have to run this using sudo because I don't have sudo privileges under this account. So you want to make sure you do that as well. If you want to, if this is like a production system, you want to set up uh, Docker, you know, and give your user privileges to Docker. I didn't want to waste time doing that. So that's why I didn't do it. So we can just run it using sudo and that will get it started for us. And it'll pull down the image for the web UI if it's not on there already, which is not. And then it'll set up the site and then we can go to it in our browser in a couple minutes when this finishes. All right, so our Docker container is created. So let's go on and just check right fast. You can run sudo docker uh, ps and then we could do a dash a uh, and this will show you the actual web ui that the container is actually running it's been up for like three minutes or so and so before we switch back up to our browser we need to figure out what the ip address is i already know what it is i'm just showing you guys how to do it but ip space a press enter that'll tell us what our ip address is at the server is 192.168.133 so actually let's copy it right fast and like i said the port is 8080 so switch back over to our browser open up a new tab let's paste in our ip address it's going to try to go to it but we have to put ports 8080 at the end of it and press enter now it'll take us over there it doesn't have a cert or anything so all you have to do is type sign up and this is all local don't worry about this this is not going out to any servers and storing your information anywhere and let's just type a name in here i'm gonna put kit and then keep it techie at gmail.com let's just use that and then just type in a random password whatever you want so you can remember it hit create account and this is all stored locally like i said it's going to stay here and now we are in the olama web ui super simple if you've been to chat gpt it's essentially the same thing you just have a whole lot more features for one you can actually talk to the thing i think you have to set a lot of this up but if you go in here under settings just want to show you guys this is how it's connecting to our llama backend the api that we created on our server like i said it's running on 
one eleven four three four. Don't you remember I tell you guys that? That's where it's actually connected to that actual language model that's running in the background, or not the model, but the actual application that's running in the background that allows you to specify a language model that you installed on the system. And you can go through here. I'm not gonna go through everything. You can set a default language model. You can actually download from here. We already have some models. That model that we you know downloaded, we can select that one and make that one the default. So and then there's some is externals uh, you can do add-ons and like I said I don't want to go through everything chats accounts and all that stuff so let's hit save that way it'll save our model and actually we probably have to select it up here and we can set it as our default there we go so that'll work we have the one that's downloaded on our system and we can use that one for everything and so let's just run through and do a simple chat and this may take a little time because the server that is running on like I said it's not heavy performance based is running in a virtual machine you know what i'm saying so you'll see the text come in kind of slow but it actually works so that's why i say it's kind of best to put it on physical hardware and then also one thing i'm doing is like i said i'm right i'm using the cpu for this system and so the cpu you know it's kind of slow versus having a gpu tied to this virtual machine if i had a gpu it'll probably run through a lot of this faster so it's super cool i'm gonna just stop it right here well actually finish so that's super cool and then we can go through we could train it a little bit more by creating chats asking it certain information or remember just like on chat gpt you know tied to your account model files you can check out this right here you can go to prompts documents you can upload documents or pictures you know all kind of stuff but the cool thing like i said is local and then you can also search for previous chats that you had in the system and so congratulations you successfully installed olama and olama web ui on your ubuntu 22.04 system and are now ready to explore the world of large language models locally i hope this tutorial was helpful in getting you started with olama if you have any questions or facing any issues please leave a comment below and i apologize if i sound a little crazy I, I have a little bit of a cold and that's why i sound a little weird but don't forget to like share and subscribe to the keep it techy channel for more linux and tech tutorials until next time keep exploring and keep it techy